All right, girlfriend, count me down. Three, two, one, go. Okay. <laughs> I'm always like, is it on three or is it after three? Did you go? Did you go know. at the right time? I don't know. I never know. I'm crazy like that. I just press the button. When I'm editing them, all I need to do is find the bit where me and you speak at the same time. And then I know we're in sync. <laughs> we are the worst. Sweating, <laughs> sweating together, talking over each other. That is our podcast. I feel the weight of this episode. This is a, do you? This is is a it big serious? one. The Kaliach. I've, <laughs> gonna... I've been working on my spit so I can say it in amazing Scottish accent. You're you're good to gob. Yes. I'm gonna hock a loog all the way through. Hock a loog just makes me feel like I'm in a 50s movie. Hock a loogie is like a <laughs> every dirty teenager between the ages of 13 and 16. I was gonna say, isn't it something from um... always a boy? It's always boys, boys hock loogies. Isn't it something from like Happy Days? But actually, I think it wasn't it not in the Breakfast Club. <laughs> yeah, probably. And like Stand By Me and all those other classic 80s yeah. movies. Yes, yeah. I'm sure. This is a big one, though, because she's like, she's a major, major, major character. Not only is she a character, but she's like a freaking goddess. And in fact, Lucy, I think we do need to, I think we need to have a separate dedicated section in the Celtic Collective for. Goddesses. gods and goddesses and I didn't yeah. I didn't foresee this happening but uh, and and I'm also embarrassed that I hadn't come across this in any of my research prior to this I feel a little dumb that that somehow got by me have you yeah, it's, even it's, heard it's, of the name mm-hmm. have you um, are you familiar with the kayak or the kayak I wouldn't say that I'm familiar in the way that I'm best buddies with the Loch Ness Monster (laughs) and the Kelpies and the other creatures that are quite well known. Mm -hmm. I would say that the the Kaliach isn't a well known you don't think so person in Scotland compared to the Loch Ness the Loch Ness Monster. Monster. The most the most well known person in celebrity in Scotland. I I just feel like once I <clears throat> once I dug a tiny bit deeper, I feel like she's like she basically, according to some, like created created it. The world created Scotland in particular, it's... specifically your country. Really? How do I not know her then? I feel I, like I should know my creator. I I don't know, and I have the same question. Um and obviously we're going to plow through the research slowly and painfully and chatterily as we always do, but I might kick this episode off with a two minute YouTube video that I might play. Cause this is okay. by a storyteller who does just a magnificent job in two mm-hmm. minutes. Summing, Wolf. summing up. Unfortunately, it's not, not our YouTube boyfriend. I- <laughs> <laughs> Our YouTube boyfriend bestie who is would be horrified if he knew. So therefore we must never tell him. This is an amazing YouTube video. It's literally two minutes. You want me to, I feel like I need to kick it off. I either need to kick it off or I need to end it with this. But I feel like it would be a good, a good introduction. Yeah. Go what do you it. think? I'm gonna play it on my phone. Yeah. Oh, first I'm gonna turn the volume on. <laughs> that would help. That would be good. That okay. Scotland was created by tectonic plates. Smashed oh, hold on. Let me let me start over in the beginning. That would be That's good. okay. I can okay. edit all that out. Some people say that Scotland was created by tectonic plates smashing together and volcanic eruptions from deep within the earth. But they're wrong. Scotland was made by a woman. A giant woman. A goddess. A creator. She has many names. They call her the old hag. Kaliach Nabeira, Du. They call her Winter Witch, Queen of the Weather. I call her the Kayach. The Kayach has a staff of power and she can tap the earth and it'll freeze in an instant. And if she plunges it into the earth and pulls it forth, water will spring free. It'll run down the sides of the valley and her animals will drink from it. But sometimes 
she'll survey the land that she's made and she'll lie back on the mountains and she'll fall asleep and she'll forget to shut the well and so the water runs down it gathers in the valleys and that's how we have Loch Lomond and Loch Awe and Loch Ness. She wears a great plaid and once a year she takes it off and she washes it in the Ayrshire Bay. It creates a sea storm so loud you can hear it in Glasgow. And when she's finished, she lays it across the land and we see it in the first snow of winter. She has a hammer of power and she can use it to smash into the landscape. She sculpts the mountains and the coastlines and the islands. She's an architect and she crafted the land we are cradled in today. On one side of the hammer is a lightning bolt and when she hits the earth, lightning. She was the original thunder god, but we've forgotten her. Mm. Oh, that was beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Who was that? <clears throat> what YouTube channel was it? So that is from the BBC Scotland YouTube channel. And she is a storyteller and her name is... Can't open the description box on my phone. Her name is Shona Cowie. Mm. Wasn't that a beautiful, yeah. beautiful? And it actually reminds me a lot of, say, the kind of origin stories from Aboriginal Australia and those kind of countries where it's about beings that do things that create parts of the landscape. <laughs> Yes, it's like a creation story mm -hmm. like that you would study. So I studied anthropology in college. That mm -hmm. was my major. And every culture has a creation story. And so this is literally the creation story of the ancient Celtic people. How come we're not taught this in school? Because I think it predates Christianity. Do you think it's also because it's a woman? I think it's very much because she's from a woman and it's also because it predates Christianity. Yeah. The oldest poems that, that have been written about her date back to 800 CE, which is fucking really old. Yeah. Which is so, which I just love because it was like, you know, Scotland and she, this, she was really, she really was like a goddess and she was celebrated I think this is so interesting. This is the first time in my research that I've come across where Ireland and Scotland are sort of joined together by the mm -hmm. same goddess for the first time. They, they're, they're, a lot of their stories have similarities, but they stay very separated. And I feel like she is a very, a, a commonality between them both very much so, which I thought was really interesting, which also made me feel like it was gr part of that greater Celtic culture and mm -hmm. not so much like country versus country versus country. So, so is she a goddess in Ireland as well? She is, yes. And they think actually that in Ireland, they think that her children, <clears throat> she had many, many, many different children, were all the, um, were like, gave birth to the start of the different races that appeared like throughout the, Cel the six mm -hmm. Celtic countries. So she like kind of started with her. So it started with her architecting the land and then it actually started with her actually literally like peopling the people in both countries, which I found was so fascinating. Is there remnants of her in other, like you say, in the other Celtic countries? So in Brittany and um, so the other countries that are, that are linked with Scotland in the way that. So that's a great question. So she is well known in at three of the six Celtic countries. So Ireland, the Isle of Man and Scotland all have many, many, many overlapping stories of the kayak or the Kyle. I, she says kayak in that mm -hmm. video. Although when it's written, the pronunciation looks like it should be Kaliach, where you pronounce the L's. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure which one is correct, but it means veiled one. And it also in modern day Gaelic, it means literally like hag, <laughs> like old hag. And they are, they are one of the same. However, she really, truly is a goddess, a goddess and has, she's known as a couple of very powerful 
words. She's known as in the old Celtic calendar, she was known as daughter of the little sun. And the little sun refers to the periods between Halloween and Beltane. And that's why I thought this is such a good follow-up to last week's episode where it was all about Halloween and sewing. And this <laughs> waiting for you to say it in fact I was wondering how you were gonna butcher the name of the kayak as well I, I'm very proud of my kayak pronunciation but Samway will always remain Samway so so I thought this was the perfect follow-up because it's literally her season begins on Halloween like the day after Halloween and then she well, yeah, because I was actually listening to another podcast um, just after Samhain mm-hmm. that I hadn't listened to before I did research for mine because it didn't come out until after ours did or just around the same time. And that guy was speaking about how it's probably considered the new year, the Celtic new year. Which one? Sewing. Well, sewing. it's ac- it's actually the hold on, I actually have this in my notes. We're skipping ahead a little bit, but I'll allow oh, it. Sorry. No, it's actually crap, where is it? It's actually the opposite. Oh, up is until, it? Yeah, it's up until oh here it is. It's up until 1599, March 25th, which mark mm-hmm. which marked which marked the end of the kayak season used mm-hmm. to be new year's day uh, oh, up until 1599 okay. and then now that's known as lady day have you ever heard of lady day lady day yes i'm sure it's i think all- we need to reintroduce right? that that sounds super good but isn't like, that weird hey, uh, i know lady it's day. national lady day after kayak <laughs> talking a lug <laughs> But um, yeah, isn't that fascinating? Up to 1599, New Year's Day was celebrated on March 25th. Yeah. What, the whole, the whole of the UK or the whole of the world? Um, not the whole of the world. Not of clearly. the whole of the world. Yes. I'm assuming like the, the those three Celtic, at least those three Celtic nations. So I will, I will, that was skipping ahead a little bit. First, I just need to say that um, the book, entitled Scottish Folklore and Folk Life by Donald A. McKenzie is the basis for 99% of my research because he has an entire chapter dedicated to her. So when you go to Catherine Briggs books and you research the kayak, it's, she's only really talking. She's like, yeah, yeah, go read this book. And so that's why I purchased it. And he has a whole chapter and the chapter is called the Scottish um, Artemis because he's comparing her to the Greek goddess Artemis, who was similar, similarly powerful. Um, but he really has done the most exhaustive research. He and um, one of the Campbells, who I just actually today purchased his book, of course. I was like, I have to have this book too. Um, they have the most like comprehensive first source stories that have been collected or written down uh-huh. out of all of the first world, first world, the first um, person like accounts of different stories. They did the best job of kind of gathering together all the stories and research on her. That was um, John Gregerson Campbell. Yes, yes. Yeah, they were both amazing. So she was known as daughter of the little sun in the old Celtic cal- calendar, meaning so the little sun is the winter months, which okay. is every all of the months between Halloween and Beltane. And the big sun is all of the months between Beltane and Halloween. So um, so she yeah, goes back again to 1800 B.E. Um, sorry, C.E. And she's also known as the winter witch. She's known as queen of the weather. She's known as um, a seasonal deity. So she really is in charge of the landscape and she's in charge of the weather. And so she's blamed for all of the storms. She's basically a personification of the of weather. The shite weather that we get in Scotland. Yes, yes. And We've the end. to thank for our- <laughs> yeah. Blizzards are coming yet again. We're gonna That's be right. Under. But she's, but she's more than that because she, because she's the creation creator, right? It was she herself was credited for making the mountains. So she was 
and she's supposed to be enormous. So as she's striding through the land, she was accidentally uh, dropping rocks from her wicker basket that she was carrying. And those became the mountains and the hills of Scotland. Um, she would also intentionally at different places drop stones for herself, for herself as stepping stones. So lochs were created when she was, um, she would take, she, well, I'll go into her physical appearance in a minute, but she had this giant staff and hammer. And so she would create wells and locks by jabbing her staff into the ground. And when she would pull it out, that would release all the water. And as you heard in that little two minute amazing story, mm -hmm. um, you know, when she was when she was distracted and not paying attention, the, the wells would overrun us. And that's how very specific locks were created from the abundance of these wells that she she left running that she wasn't supposed to be. But she was she was awesome. Uh, she was awesome in her power. She literally created the landscape. There's, there's tons of mountains and boulders and lochs throughout Scotland and Ireland that are named for her. So she is like very well, well known in different areas. Um, Have you got examples of those? They are, I didn't want to belabor too much on them because my pronunciation is so so horrific oh come on you could try so just but, so I could get a little bit of a laugh so I was gonna say just so you can make fun of me well here's here's two that are named after her but also have some nice stories so it's not just boring like this one that I can't pronounce is here and also this one that I can't pronounce so there is a there is a Glen Calich in Glen Leon in Perthshire let me ask you this. Is S-H-I-R-E pronounced Shire or Shire? Like Perth, um, Perth How would you say that? I Perth would Shire? Say, Perth Shire? Um, so I live in Aberdeenshire. Aberdeenshire. Aber do you know, when you, uh, when you put me on the spot, I can't think I how know. I would say something. Perthshire. Perthshire? Perthshire. Sure. Okay. I was going to say, I was reading something recently that was like, it's not Shire, it's Shire. And I was like, oh, it's I'm sure. pretty sure I always say Shire. So Perthshire with a stream called Alt Kaliech, which runs into Loch Leon. This area is famous for a pagan ritual, which according to legend is associated to the Kaliech. There's a small shieling. I don't even know what a shieling is in the Glen known as either... <laughs> Tich na Kailach, which is Scottish Gaelic for house of the old woman, or Ting na Bodach, which is Sc Scottish Gaelic for house of the old men, which houses a number of heavy water-worn stones resembling miniature human beings. Roughly rectangular, the original building measured two meters by 1.3 meters by 0 0.4 meters high with a stone roof. See how this gets a little dry? A replacement it's, roof yeah, of a wooden open. pallet having collapsed and the whole building having somewhat ruinous. It was rebuilt by a local diker in 2011. So I, I'm going to interrupt and say I just please. Googled because yes. I should know this. Coming mm -hmm. from you really country, should. But I don't. Um, but a shieling is like a, just a little hut. Oh, thank you. So I would have called that a button Ben or a bothy, but maybe it depends mm. on. Here's a little picture. If you're on YouTube, you can see this. And if uh, not, I will. Shieling is a hut. Yep. Oh, it's yeah. a little hut. And there's like some stones that are, that are kind or, of, yeah. but they're like purposefully arranged in front of the hut oh. they're not just singular stones they're sort of like combinations of stones so we get something is a hut or a collection of huts common in wild and lonely places in the hills and mountains of scotland okay so i really don't know what the difference is between shielding and a bothy I don't know. And this is where I got a little dry, but there's many, many examples. The only other one that I thought was kind of cool is because it set off a tradition that's still upheld to this day. So that's mm -hmm. kind of relevant to modern day times is that according to local legend, the stones of this, of that, I just showed you the little hut with there's like very purposeful stones set out in front of it represent the Kaliach, her husband, the Bodach and their children 
and the site may represent the only surviving shrine of its kind in all of Great Britain. So that's pretty oh, significant. Wow. Uh-huh. The local legend suggests that the Kayach and her family were given shelter in the Glen by locals. And while they stayed there, the Glen was always fertile and prosperous. When they left, they gave the stones to the locals with the promise that as long as the stones were put out to look over the Glen at Beltane and put back into the shelter and made secure for the winter at San Wayne. <laughs> Sorry, Samhain. I'm going to say Samhain because that's the American, that's the American amazing pronunciation. (laughs) Then the Glen would continue to be fertile. This ritual is still carried out to this day, which I thought that is really cool. That's amazing. Yeah, I thought so too. Mm -hmm. So that's a little, this little hut shrine that's made to her, but then there also are like a ton of, of mountains and lochs that are you know it, the, with the local lore is well known that she has created in those and then her mountain like her own throne they say to be is supposed to be on top of ben nevis which i saw which is isla sky which is that's like a super famous mountain mm-hmm. right yes it's um, one that lots of mountain mountain climbers right. like to climb. So they go bag that Monroe. Yeah, that was another I f- be that up was- there. <laughs> You're not bagging any Monroes. A little bit too high. Arthur's seat was high enough for me. Yeah, I think that um, I conquered Arthur's seat, and that's me done. And I take that <laughs> off my list. <laughs> So I don't need to be climbing Ben Nevis. Well, one of the ways that I am like luring Sean into my dreams of like retiring in Scotland, like actually my Scottish cottage is I'm because he loves like he's like a he enjoys like physical activities where I would actually like to sit inside and do art all day. But one of the ways that I'm luring him over there is with the promise of doing a lot of hiking. And I didn't know. And I was actually a little embarrassed that I'd been to Scotland so many times and I had never heard the expression to bag a Monroe. And what does that oh. mean? I know. I didn't Monroe know that. Bagging? Yes. So there you want to are... tell everyone? Yes. Well, <laughs> Do you think I know what I'm talking about with this? Well, I can um, back you up because I know. because The I, person that also it. likes to sit inside and paint. And, I know. And, and maybe go for a nice hike, You'll but not, certainly not a, certainly not a, yes. a Monroe. So there, I'm, just, I'm just trying to have a look. I think there are... A Monroe is a... I'm Googling. Yeah. Um, I'm like, do you want me to babble while you stall? Yeah. <laughs> do you need some time? I can cut it out. <laughs> now that we're at, ed- now that we're now actually that we're editing. Big shot editors. <laughs> so and- the Monroes are mountains in yes. Scotland that are over 3000 feet high. Right. And there are, I'm just reading this right off the, the Scotland it. website. Yeah. There are 282 Monroes in Scotland. In Scotland, the highest one in is Ben Nevis. That is four thousand four hundred and eleven feet, and that's her throne. So how cool is that? Yeah. She gets the so biggest it's the one of all. Right, mountain in Scotland. But Munro bagging is like it's like a bucket list. People yes. have the, a list of all the Munros. How many did I say? Two hundred and eighty-two, yes. and it'd be like they they want to tick them all off their list. So they right. want to they want to say that they've done all of them right basically it's like so, a so you got one in the bag then you just you just yeah. hiked one of them it's like, it's like walking from saying that you're gonna walk from john groats to land's end that's like another kind of mm-hmm. for sure it's like, list thing it's like walking the do. appalachian trail only or going up at yeah or going yeah. up everest right right <laughs> but it's the scottish equivalent right so yeah yeah so that's so the largest one is supposedly that is her kind of mainstay so she um so she she has two forms she and i'm going to read to you the physical description that is written by donald mckenzie because i just think he does it best he's the man so this is page 135 oh sorry 139 from my edition and you can buy these on do Amazon. I have this book? I you probably do. I'm sure you do. It looks like my cover. These are all reprinted. So this was published, I believe, in the early 30s. Yes, 1935. But he is one of the like 
he is like a precursor to Catherine Briggs, who was one of the great compilers of folklore in, in Scotland. He's a big deal. So this is, um, where are we? Okay. So she takes two forms. She is a, a super ugly, horrifically looking hag. And she also can take the form of a, a beautiful maiden. Mm -hmm. um, and she's very specific about when she takes each form. So um, in Scotland, she's known as the Kayach Burr. Burr, burr. So I have to like tap my R's, which only Max can master in this family. Thank you, but I'm working on it. Um, so he, this, this descriptions are heard by the writer in various parts of the Highlands. She has a blue black face with one eye on the flat of her forehead and the sight of which is very keen. Uh, in songs put into her mouth, she is made to say, why is my face so black, so black? Her teeth are red as rust and her, what? I know, and her hair is matted, confused and long and white as an aspen covered with hoar frost. She wears you have confused here because it's like a hot mess. That's how I read that. That's like, I would say that my hair is right? confused. <laughs> Your my hair is confused like 95% of the time. <laughs> I can't I'm going to start referring to my hair. <laughs> that is like the best right? description. I know. I know. I love it. <laughs> my we hair's got a little roots. confused today. We have all sorts of, I know, right? It's so good. And by the way, I am, I already have picked out my reference and I'm so drawing this for the Celtic Collective as part of our December drawings. Um, Cause, oh my God. Cause, cause listen, this is as, almost as good as the Benia with how amazing <laughs> this character, like she have floppy boobs. She kind of, you know, it's weird. They don't talk about her boobs. Maybe oh, we can make on. something up. We'll have to yeah. interject. We'll go into Wikipedia <laughs> and make that correction. We'll improvise. Her <laughs> <Yeah. boobs. It's> okay. <laughs> she also wears a, a kerchief or a much, which I've never heard of a much M U T C H is, have you heard of that word? Is it Scottish for ker kerchief? <laughs> Google that. She never well. heard of it, but I'm going to Google it for you. All her clothing is gray and she is wrapped in a dun colored plaid drawn tightly around her shoulders. Okay, On her feet um, are buskins. Buskins. Sorry. Buskins? I've been drinking. Buskin? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. You're asking me to Google an awful lot of words. Well, you know, you. be an active um, participant. Will you? A much is a linen cap worn by oh. older women. Is there a picture? I might oh, just, I just see that. That was just a dictionary. That was just how is she? <laughs> I need to get a full, like a mental view so I can draw her later. You want, uh, you want a photo? It's just giving me footballers. Oh, <laughs> there must be a is footballer a called Much. <laughs> there must be. Somebody, there's like Jordan Much and, and Jordan no. Much. We don't have time for these much. guys. Let me see a and Much. Kobe Much and... Jordan okay. Much and Brendan Rogers. Hey, hey, bring it around. Bring it around. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, it's an oh, old white with a is... frilly cap. <laughs> it's a that's woman ugly. in that picture. She is a man. Are you sure that's not a man? That's an old wifey. Stop with it. With a frilly white cap. That is not a woman. There is no way. Yeah, portrait of an <gasps> older woman wearing a much. Uh, Scottish house cap. That is a very handsome woman. Do you want to see another one? She looks <laughs> like a full on 1 million percent man. You're just listening to us. You, I think I might put these to put on the website actually. Yes. Or yes, you have to for go sure. head over to YouTube. In even though that doesn't, we don't get good download figures. Okay. When you watch on YouTube. Look at these. Oh my. Yeah, and these are, these are lacking in attractiveness. That first Karen. one was a man, though. I'm not even joking. Yeah, that one also one. was Jesus. This one is, this one is, um, actually oh, Mrs. No. Isabella Burns Beck, 1771 oh, to 1858, on. the <gasps> youngest sister of, I Stop guess, it. Robert Burns. Oh, sweet Jesus. She I had a hard life. Sorry. I am sorry. I know. Well, Thank maybe, God they didn't have selfies in those days. Can maybe you in her younger years, she looked a little better. I have to say, I probably don't look any better oh, right now on the video. Stop it. <laughs> stop it right now. <laughs> Can you research what buskins are? Because yeah. that's what she's wearing on Do her feet. Look, 
Do you think we'll get some good photos? Yes. I can't wait. I can't wait. She is of Trust enormous him. stature and great strength. She is okay. Sh- a buskin yeah. is a laced boot reaching halfway or more to the knee. That sounds quite cool. Oh, actually. that is cool. I'd take that. I'd wear that. Yeah, I'd wear some buskins. Um, Except I have really big calves, so it might be hard to find. But I'm not sure if I would wear these these oh, photos. No. Oh yes, bring it. This one's like an, a lovely front. Like the front oh. leather's missing, so it's like a, a oh. toe-free version. Those are like Jesus shoes. Um, you couldn't get away with that in Scotland. Your no, feet would get would super freeze. cold super quickly. I mean, basically in Scotland, we're in boots. Yeah. We're in boots from like August till May. So what? That and you is... might get your sandals out for two weeks out of yeah. the year if you're lucky. So the picture of what Lucy's showing is literally a sole and then laces all the way on top of the feet and then up to halfway to the through the up to halfway of the cats and that's it with like zero leather zero fabric she is a hardcore bitch if that's all she's sporting in the winter check these ones out Karen okay I'm checking oh what there's some interesting those are going on fancy this one all right you better screenshot this shit I'm putting this on the blog so everyone can see look at those this one has got like a curly toe and then the curly toe is attached to the okay. boot okay. with a chain. Can I just say There's that I, fashion shit okay. going on there. can I just say though that I am currently suffering from plantar fasciitis and that boot where the toe is connected to the calf chin is literally the same like treatment you wear for plantar fasciitis sufferers. I swear to Have you got God. shoes that look like that? I'm going to show you right now. Hold on. I, don't Santa you just put a shape. thing in your shoe? Check this shit out. I'm not kidding. What you just showed me is literally. Oh, okay. Just are you ready? To have a buskin. Look. You're going to die. Okay. <laughs> ready? Just gone off on a, on a fashion what? tangent. What, Where what the, t- the hell? <laughs> <laughs> See, the toe is connected to the shin. Are you wearing them right now? <laughs> it's a fucking. 2021 20, buskin. <laughs> You're welcome. 21st century buskin. <laughs> Look at this. AKA one. plantar fasciitis treatment. Dude, that kayak knew what's going on. What? How is that weather appropriate? They're not, not in Scotland. It's too fucking cold in no Scotland. No way. Uh, she is... You'd you would have fr- um you'd have frostbite on your toes. Well, especially she- if you were at the top of Ben Nevis, because it's probably snowing yes. there right now. <laughs> she is the real deal. She's hardcore if that's all she's wearing. Yes. She is capable of traveling very swiftly and of leaping from mountain to mountain and across arms of the sea. In her right hand, see, this is where she's just badass. This is like where she becomes Thor because she ha- carries a magic rod which is also capable of like creating lightning strikes when she like smashes it to the ground see that's amazing it's amazing it's also referred to as a hammer signifying thrashing and beating and striking and connects with the english sleigh with her magic hammer she smites the earth so that it may be hardened with frost and the grass preventing from growing. She is the enemy of growth. Like she is a badass. That is all I have so to say. She's different from a distant God that existed when things were getting created and then went away. She's there up in the top of Ben Nevis all the time like every year she comes around every year she's every when yes she's the goddess of winter and she rules Mm -hmm. she rules she rules what's already there but she also like rules and dictates the storms that come in and they actually name they have names for all of the storms that you get especially the like in in spring like right before like when the end of spring when you get those like thrashing horrific storms they have specific names for all the different specific storms that she creates so there's a spirit there's a period of spring called um uh kayak when she pauses 
And then like, she does like a one final blow to try to arrest the growth before, like she's like battling against the real spring from actually happening. She's, she's kind of a nasty bitch. Like she really thrashes around kind of angrily and is the one that's causing all these storms all winter. So she's, she's, she's she's the cause of all our, she is Scottish weather. And she starts winter in a very methodical way where Mm -hmm. she is, she starts off by, she wears this huge plaid and she she begins she ushers winter in by washing her great plaid in the whirlpool of a very specific place called gory cory vrecken which i have no idea where that is and she creates a sea storm that's so loud and so strong that people can hear it for 20 miles across three days and so when she is finally done washing she lays, she takes her plaid and she lays it, like whips it over the entire country of Scotland. And it's laying this is she's laying a snowy blanket over the whole country. So that first huge snow that you get is her after she's washed and then flung her plaid across the country. Sometimes we don't get a huge snow until March. You're going to have to take that up with her. I know. I'm going to have to have words with her because actually that's not honest. But also, are you in the Western? Are you in the Western Highlands? No, you're in the Eastern <laughs> Aberdeen, Aberdeen. So it doesn't apply to you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. This is the Western Highlands. Obviously. Is she not the whole of, she not the whole of Scotland? <laughs> no, just the cool parts. I, are you saying that I don't live in a cool what? part? That's actually kind of true. Actually, I'm not in a cool part. You're the opposite end of the Highlands. So. You're the opposite. Of cool. You are. You are in the Far East. This is her. She makes her magic in the Far West. I'm so sorry. We're the opposite. Opposite of cool. You just get the leftover in the weather. The northeast of Scotland. Yes. So actually, that's... there's a there's a mount, mountain range in between the West Coast and here, and so we get we do we get different weather because there's a big mountain range right right but quite (gasps) often the west coast is not as cold hold on i need to yell to someone in my family to feed her i'm gonna just leave everything running do you want to just yeah yeah yeah, that's That's probably easier easier. okay hang on i need to yell hey max max can you feed maggie dinner and let her out can you feed maggie some dinner and let her outside she is a hungry and awaiting. Aww. Poor Max. He's of all my three kids. His bedroom is the closest to my office, which is why he gets chosen for every single task. But he's also, thank God, the most agreeable child. So he'll do it because <laughs> <laughs> he's my youngest and he's not quite oppositional yet. But anyways, he took care of business. Thank you. He also can rock a really good Scottish accent. So he's therefore my favorite. He um, didn't offer to offer to be our sound guy and then ditch that job within the first week. No, that's like Billy. Billy did. And he's a classic 15 <laughs> year old. Yeah. He's rocking his asshole stage right now. He's killing it. Oh, killing brilliant. it. So it that's how, end, actually, so I don't tell me that. Um, so he, she, that's how she ushers in. Mm-hmm. winter and like I said she also has because she is very deliberate with her storms there's really specific names for all of the different kind of seasons they call like February is like the wolf the wolf month because it's ferocious um I have all my notes here which looks so great before I have started drinking and now I don't know where I was okay do you want to know how she ends? Oh, no, I already read that. Oh, wait, before we get to that, let's talk about her, how she appears in her beautiful form, because okay. that's related to her, how her physical appearance, which we are going on before. Oh, yeah. So in her, in her hag form, she's got a black face and red teeth and one eye. One eye. Yeah. She's like a force to be reckoned with. If you go to YouTube and you, you look up what is a kayak, there is a couple of YouTube videos that are made with like almost like a claymation character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is not pretty. It's ridiculous. And then this character 
appears in a lot of other people's YouTube videos, which I find both fascinating, hilarious, and also horrific all wrapped into one. But I'm going to draw her as one of the projects for Celtic Collective because come on, she's like Thor, but like Definitely. way uglier and also way more powerful. She's creating entire countries. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of different folk stories that that highlight the the beautiful formation of her I didn't there's hardly there's not a lot of information about this side of her than there is like her normal hag appearance mm -hmm. um but in a folk story which was connected with the fions now I had to google this because I had not heard of this term before and this led me to to research and then purchase a book called The Fions, The Fairies, and The Picks, which this book is one of these other like first person historical folklore sources that talks about the difference between all three, um, which I can't wait to dive into. This like this opened this tiny crack in another mm -hmm. like rabbit hole that I need to go down next because it's sort of like the picks are a historical people, right? That historians know yeah. existed. But the they don't actually know a lot about them. No, they don't. They're still quite an, um, quite a mystery. Right. Yeah. And then the, the Fions, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. F-I-A-N-S. Have you heard of this? F-I-A-N. Like Fian. I um, have heard the word, but I'm I don't sure know you have. And that, so there's a book called like the Picks, Fians and Fairies. And I just bought it because I was like, what is this that I'm stumbling upon? Mm -hmm. And this is my favorite part about our podcast, honestly, is these these tangents that like capture our attention that we have to go, you know, skate, run after and research. It's fascinating. Definitely. So um, and this this also ties into a lot of Irish folklore is too and they, they be kind of it kind of combines both of them anywho they are in some in just to sum it up in a sentence the fairies the picks and the fions kind of overlap intermingle around the same kind of time period they go way back together and so there's a lot of miss there's a lot of mystery as to if they some of them were the same if some of them are different in the stories that have been handed down since that time so in a folk story, which was connected with the fians, she appears one night as a creature of uncouth appearance, which to me seems like she's hanging out in her hag form, who claims mm -hmm. hospitality. So she's looking, oh, she, yes, she's, she's offering hospitality. So this two gentlemen, Fion and Ossian, refuse to let her under her coverings, under their coverings, sorry. Um, D are made, and I need to look into the, if these are like famous Fion characters. I think that these are supposed to be Fions that we're supposed to recognize, which I don't know because I'm not familiar with this. Say their names again. Fion. Ossian? Yes. Yeah. What was the other one? Fion and Darmaid. D-I-A-R-M-A-I-D. Like yeah, Diarmaid. That, Do you know those characters? <clears throat> that you would say it Dermot. Okay, Dermot, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, Pleads. And Ossian, Ossian's a god, isn't he? So yeah, that's what I'm saying is these are all tied up in mm -hmm. folklore. And I think it cross paths with some Irish folklore as well. So and she, Irish to me actually. Yeah, so those are tied up in this, that kind of uh, folklore, which is some, which is a area we have not yet explored, which I'm no. excited to. Um, pleads that she should not be allowed to come to the warmth of the fire. Soon afterwards, she sought to be under the warmth of the blanket together with himself. How do you say that again? D D Der Dermot. How Dermot. did you Dermot turned a fold of it, meaning the blanket between the two of them. Cause he was like, I'm not touching this old hag. Like mm -hmm. she's nasty before long. He gave a start for the hag had transformed herself into the most beauteous woman that man had ever saw. So she has this ability to turn from her hag self into this like beautiful, beautiful version. So there's another account in an early poetic version of the Thomas the Rhymer legend given by Sir Walter Scott mm -hmm. and Lucy 
covered Thomas the Rhymer in where I want our very early episodes. Yeah. Called I think it was f- like the second or third one. Yes. It? It was called early on. Yep. And this one is called the fairy queen as she became known appears as a lovely woman worthy of being called queen of heaven. She subsequently appears as a blue hag like Kelly bear. Mm-hmm. And then there's a little quote from that, which I won't, um, I won't bother butchering and I'm just going to, sk- and then there's another version of a different poem where Scott gives another version of the folk tale. The appearance of the beautiful lady is changed into that of the most hideous hag in existence. One side is blighted and wasted as if by palsy. One eye droops, drops from her head. Her color as clear as virgin silver is now of a dun leaden hue. So she goes from just ugly to the most beautiful. Then there's one last depiction where it says, this is the story of the loathly hag of which a version is given in Chaucer's The Wife of Bath's Tale. The knight under pain of death has to discover what thing a woman most desires. He receives the answer from an ugly old hag on condition that he will marry her. It is that woman desire to have sovereignty over husband and love and also mastery in married life. The knight marries the hag, and when he kisses her, she becomes as fair as any lady, empress, or queen. It's like so, an early version of Beauty and the Beast. It is. And then it just sums up in one last sentence as the fair young woman, the Kaliach, is the giver of luck and plenty during the summer. Now, as she relates to a summer thing, in most of the tales, she actually at Bell at the onset of Beltane turns into a giant stone or boulder. And mm-hmm. legend has to as to why this happens is that she does have many children. One of her sons is chasing her on a swift horse to and she he's threatening to put her eye out if she doesn't stop. So oh. to escape destruction, she turns it's not herself very nice child. No, is it? she turns herself into stone to protect herself okay. from this chase. And so as legend has it, every Beltane she freezes and turns into stone until winter when she comes again and repeats the cycle of washing her plaid and throwing her mm-hmm. coat over the whole country in the first snow and on and on we go. So she is this like magical goddess almost like a sorceress with this power to shape the landscape control the weather right interact with humans it's just really so awe inspiring does she also have the possibility of turning into the, her beautiful version in summer then that's according to those stories she has that ability but the stories of her beautiful version are far fewer than the ones where she is the ugly hag and she's really like wreaking havoc with her storms Mm -hmm. she has a lot of roles also historically and in folklore she also is supposed to be the patroness of wild beasts she's supposed to walk in control of and be in charge of deer and swine goats and cattle and wolves so when hunters can't find game if they're out on a hunt and they can't find any game they blame her for like herding them off in a different direction or like so a lot of things are blamed on her from the weather right some uh, like uh like horrible you know crevasse in in the, in a mountain mm-hmm. right oh that must be the kaleach like you know smashing with her big hammer and they can't find game so like oh she's off with her cattle and so she's blamed for like a lot of what happens in the the harsh harsh winters which which makes sense i mean it's really nice to blame something yeah <laughs> like kind of sad though isn't I it i know considering she's created so much that she then also gets a blame for so much as well is she has a lot of responsibility for creation as well as destruction yeah. i suppose she also has a lot of accounts of having actually even a shape-shifting ability which oh, i really? is always interesting to me yes so um and again i'm getting all of this from the same book um so it says dr farnell shows that um hold on one second blah 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 Um, In Highland folk references, the Kaliach is spoken of occasionally as a gull, a cormorant, an eagle, or a heron. Um, 
this was a story that was um, relayed by a gentleman named Donald, who was a ghillie. And then I had to research what a ghillie was. And ghillie is like a hunter assistant, basically. So yeah. you're not the guy hunting, but you're the, you're like in golf. You're like you're the, the caddy. Gamekeeper. <laughs> yeah. You're it's like the, gamekeeper. The, the caddy. You're doing all the grunt work. So this it's was like his the story. person on the estate that helps to, that goes alongside the hunt and looks after it. Right. Yeah. So he was drawing, um, he was telling the story and drawing attention to a large uh, cairn of stones at the end of a loch. He said the Kaliach had been spreading sickness and death among man and beast and was opposed by the local clergymen by means of Bible and prayer, holy water and other spiritual weapons. It was subsequently discovered that she had her abode in the cairn and was in the habit of flying through the air by night, especially when the moon was shining towards the inhabited part of the country. At length, she was shot by Duncan, an ex-soldier, who placed in his gun a crooked sixpence and some silver buttons. Everyone was convinced that the heron brought down was the Kaliach herself. Donald added, she hasn't done much harm since yon, but her guest is still to the fore, and the loch side is no canny after the gloaming. Oh my God, I just nailed that accent. No, I would have <laughs> thought that I was listening to a Scottish person. <laughs> Shut up. After beliefs in witchcraft were introduced into the Highlands, these were mixed with local beliefs. Memories of the Kaliach appeared to account for the Highland beliefs regarding witches raising storms and drowning people and appearing wow. as various animals, including sheep, mm -hmm. hares, wild cats, rats, ravens, gulls, cormorants, whales. And on and so on. So it's we like go. she's transformed into these yes. people. And I'm a little bit saddened to hear that they tried to kill her and they're hunting her down. Because for me, yeah. when we go when we think back to the beginning of this episode, she's really the creator yeah. of the country. She is. But notice who's killing her. Yeah. Christianity with their Bible, men and their guns. Yeah. It's like speaks volumes. So. Yeah. <laughs> what's happening all over. So, I mean, she's, she's, that's an amazing character. Hi, are you taking your shower? Oh, <laughs> you gave me talk to the hands. Must be on a word call. Ooh, Ooh. talk to the hands. Yikes. He doesn't get to be on our podcast anyway. Oh, but now he's smiling. <laughs> You're mean. Oh, he says, I mean on the podcast. Well, I'm only mean because they're so bad. You mean to me. <laughs> We are never. Sean is so sad. I'm sorry, honey. I love you. You're the best. You're the best. You're not even the worst. Um, I'm trying to think if there's she's anything. such an interesting character. Isn't she so like rich with her mm -hmm. her abilities and her backstory? And that's so what many... I think is so sad is that. It is something that, I mean, I was really completely unaware. I'd heard the name, but I was really completely unaware of her. But this is part of our heritage. It's something that we're not yeah. taught. Right. It's not passed down to us. It's being completely eclipsed by other creationist type stories. And when we think about countries with these these type of creation stories we think about countries like uh, you know the not countries but people that Native Americans people in Africa people in the Aboriginal people right. in Australia and we forget that we actually have that in our in your own past as well right yeah and I think that's like at the very end of that two minute video that I started with mm -hmm. and the very last sentence she says is and we forgot we, yeah. for, we forgot about her it's like so like it's so sad oh my gosh it? right so she's really like the matriarch so yeah. cool she's so powerful and I, I love that her powerful um sort of personification is the like the the dark one you know mm -hmm. like it's not the beautiful one it's she's like she's so badass she's like hideous and she's you know what I mean yeah. like she's like She's like all in her, her job. Do you think this whole idea of her beautiful form is a more recent 
a more recent thing that's happened. Ooh, and I don't mean by fiction. recent, I mean 1950s, but you know, right. maybe 17th, 18th century or something, because they couldn't, mm. they wanted to beautify, they couldn't cope. They, that lovely, um, that that lovely romantic view a bit like beauty and the beast of like we're going to give this person a kiss and they're going to turn into the most beautiful thing in, that ever existed because ha just having her as this ugly character was no longer acceptable mm. or did she always have a beautiful form that's a great question and it's also, it's also a great question because there's such a, so little stories mm -hmm. about, about her beautiful side and almost all of the stories are about her sort of horrific side that it, yeah. that's a, I wonder, that's a great observation or thing to consider that I should definitely research to find more about that I do not know. I also thought it was so it I was really interested in this one how it bridged I Ireland and Scotland together because mm -hmm. because their ancient history they have so much in common. Yeah. I know that like modern politics like separates everybody, right? Like as history goes on and you develop your own in individualities so much, but like mm -hmm. going back so many centuries, you're much more tied in your togetherness right they're probably settled around the same period they're you know the well, vikings are attacking also, at the same time do you know what i mean yeah. so you probably had more also, in common back then than you do there now were also people that actually scotland is named after the scotty tribe that right came over from, from ireland, ireland. settled in right parts of scotland right um i think that our cultures are a lot more similar right. than um english and Scottish oh 100 percent and so I know so I kind of love that part of it you know it ties you back to like your real your like true beginnings where you are much more tied as one and the island of a man is right between so it makes yeah. sense that like you're all kind of grouped together mm -hmm. and why you're a little bit more separated from the other Celtic nations who are geographically farther yeah. away which I found super interesting so I know I love that. I also thought it was interesting in one of the, there was very few views on that video that I played at the beginning. And the last person commented, um, I think they were from, they were from um, Appalachia and they said, I'm from rural Appalachia in the States. I call her Mama Appalachia. And so I would oh, love to see wow. if there isn't, an American little version of this because of yes. they have the common Irish Scottish ancestry. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And actually not, me at um, all. not only that, but have you seen those maps that have been going around where actually originally that land would have been one landmass? Mm -hmm. So there was a connection even further back. I know that that is, that wouldn't have, led to this because that come from the Scottish and Irish incomers that have right. come into Appalachia but obviously that's why the Scots and the Irish felt such connection to that piece that part right. of America because right. the landmass was actually and originally connected mm -hmm. to it and it's very very similar the landscape's very similar I know well and after the clearances just a huge number of Scots all came and settled directly yeah. in that area. So I'm sure that's where like my husband, Sean's family came from. My dad is actually doing, my dad is like a huge ancestry.com nerd. He's published a biography of our family history, blah, blah, blah. But for my kid, for his grandchildren's graduation presents, he's mm -hmm. doing, he's researching their lineage Mm -hmm. You know, my husband, Sean could give two shits about his Scottish ancestry. So interestingly, my dad is now researching it oh, is he? for my son, Jack, and cause he's about to graduate. And so I actually can't wait to, to see where, where that research lands because mm -hmm. I, cause his family's been here for so long. I would not be surprised if they came from 
some of the clearances because they've been here, yeah. I'm sure since the 1700s, which is oh when they all goodness. came over. And you know, it's so weird too. And so cool, Lucy, when I was with you and you took us to that little antique bookstop, that mm-hmm. bookshop, mm-hmm. what town was that? That was Cullen. not Pennon. It was Cullen. Cullen. Yeah. That, that in that bookshop, I found a Harold Julie, a Harold, Harold, I can't say it. Harold Yes. Harold D of Campbell's book in that yeah. bookshop, which has yeah. had the Campbell ancestry trees dating back to the God knows when, Oh my God, you're my superhero. Look at this. I'm so oh. jealous. Actually, <laughs> you're making just one been served. <laughs> oh God. That smells delicious. Thank you, Sean Campbell. Mm, just got a toast. That's very nice. Um, and in it has, it has like the ancestry back to forever. So my dad was just here. So I gave him that book to incorporate into his research while I had him in person. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, don't take it with you because it's like so special, but also whoever previously had bought that book, which I think was published in the night in the seventies had inserted their own like clippings. Oh, like I newspaper, like newspaper clippings and like had handwritten notes all throughout the book, which like updated. I mean, it was such a treasure. I could not believe I found it. Lucy, when I was in that store, I was like, are you serious? Because I know Sean doesn't care. I feel like it's my duty to like fill in mm-hmm. the blanks for my kids of like, you know, in addition, I know I have my weird Scottish obsession, so I'm not doing it for myself, but I would love to do it for them in case they care. I would love to have some answers for when, like, if they can trace. I it back. would love to have some answers about where where his family comes from, and I mean, he's a Campbell, so it's obvious where his family comes from, right? But, but when, like, when did they come over? Where... I know. So I actually am so excited that my, my dad is the one that's going to be unearthing that. I mean, and he he does it like full time, like it's a just job. He's like obsessed. So, and the coolest part too is, and I feel bad because he he published this book and he gave it to like all of his grandchildren and all of his kids. So like there's, I have like five copies in my, in my own house. And like, I don't even think I've cracked the book. Like no one, you know, like it's like our everything. And he's like here and we're like, great. We like chuck it on the bookshelf. Poor poor dad. (gasps) I know, I know he will never listen to this. Thank God. I know. But my son had to do like research for like, whatever, some school project. And I was like, Oh, and it was like on his ancestry. And I'm like, Oh my God, no, I have this book from grandpa. Like he wrote it. So you could know. And it was so sweet. My son, Jack was like, wow, this is like really, he told me on my dad's birthday. He's like, this is so interesting. Like, I really love all this stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, you have to tell grandpa. Like he doesn't think anyone cares about this, but only because nobody cares about this. So I'm like, you should tell grandpa. And he was like, he's like, yeah, okay. Like whatever, whatever. I'm like, no, seriously, like really tell him, like he's spent like 10 years publishing this book that (laughs) no one cares about except for you. Like you should, for your dad, I know, like you should really tell him. And then I said, no. And I was like, no, Jack, it's his birthday. Like you should really tell him it's literally his birthday today. And he was like, what? He was like, oh my God. Okay. Okay. I'll go like, I'll like, just text him like a sweet. No, like, especially because you really mean it. Like, it's not like I'm not making you say this. Like you said it to me first. So yeah. So he let him know on his birthday. Like, I really liked your book, grandpa. So I think that people in America are a lot more obsessed with chasing ancestry than we are over here. I, I've never bothered to do it because I basically know that I'm from Scotland and England. Well, right. And no one but, is from here. So everybody wants to know where they came from. Yeah. So it's, a I think it a... would be interesting. I would quite like to know a bit more yeah. about the previous Lucy's in my family. Yeah. Do you know anything? Uh, no, not really. Nothing. It's not fascinating. I am yeah. 8% Scottish. I never told you that. You're 8%? I've never told you that before. Oh my God, Karen. But I, I also, it's the 8% that can say Sawi in Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> but I hate that percentage is so stupid to me. That's why. Yeah, it's, that's, it's kind of crap. It's kind of it's, useless super dumb so that's why I never say it out loud because for every every me who won't say it out loud there's another dumb American who's like I'm eight percent 
Look at like real like it's really that like it's to me it's just so ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah. I can't. That's why I just say I'm not because really, it's just no. I've never done any of those no. DNA things. No, that's just thing. what my dad. My dad is, and he. I, I I actually give him a lot of credit because he did all of his research over 10 years and he refused to do the blood work part of it. He was like, no, I'm doing this. Like, I think he's like, you know, 77 years old. He's like, I'm doing this like old school, like based on records, death records, marriage certificates, birth certificates. Like he did that. Like after like he was finished with his exhaustive research, then he Mm -hmm. kind of did it to like confirm which I have mad I do have mad respect for him in that because he did it like yeah. a true historian and not just like every other stupid American who's like oh so I'm 23.1 percent there- Swedish like, like come on God. were there any juicy juicy secrets in your family yeah I don't know because I never read the I haven't read the book yet. you might have like murderers and witches I don't think so the only I think we're really boring they were like non exciting. The only thing that's cool I know is that we have a lot of longevity runs in our family. So a lot of my relatives lived for a million years, which is cool. And also terrifying at the same time. Like my grandmother lived to be 103 and we have both men and women on my dad's side that live like fucking forever, which I'm not really into. Like, I don't really well, want to be 103. Now. You say that now, but when you're like 70, you might be glad of it. No, no, because it's not like when you're 103, life is awesome. You know, yeah. you're like good life taps out at like 92. Yeah, so I'm good. Like my grandma, when I went to visit her, was like, she was done. She was like, oh, every day I wake up. It's so annoying. Like, like literally, she was so annoyed. Yeah, my granny spent the last yeah. 10 years of her life just sitting in a chair. She watching was like, TV. I'm so bored. Like, I'm done. Like, she literally said the yeah. words. And like, she couldn't knit because her hands were too Right. And you can't sore, hear and, and you can't see. Yeah. And you're like over it. You're like, all right. And she and she she didn't want to, you know, she couldn't deal with new technology. So you'd bring stuff around for her, like, um, yeah at the time she it was do nothing he was like why is this tape player not yes. working and it was like because it's a cd player grandma i know i know i did want to go to her nursing home and like yeah. slap giant bows earphones on her and like crank like music like classical music into her head all day because like they just sit there looking at the wall it's horrible and she had her daughter you know till she was in her mid-70s you know, came and visited her every day and God bless Aunt Weege and blah, blah, blah. But like, I'm just not into it. But that I find fascinating, but also, like I said, also terrifying. I don't want to live. To, I just don't want to You can be like slip old. something in your drink. Yeah, your, actually my what, friends and I made, my friends and I 19. made a pact. We would kill each other off at a certain age. Like we're just call it. Like I'm going to go on Thursday. Somebody like take care of that on Thursday. Like I have a great day. And then be like, somebody give me my juice. Just give me my juice. And I'm going to go. I'll haunt and I'll you. Wake up. Then I'll come and haunt you. Yeah. I, but make sure you're wearing us really cool. Oh, yeah. I want to sure. die in a really mm-hmm. cool, like Victorian style <clears throat> gown. So we haunt the shit out of people. Ghost yes. in a cool. I don't want to be a ghost in. Yeah. Well, I'm sure as it goes, I know we got on to this every week. I'm sure as it it. goes, you don't feel the constraints of your clothes. So it's not like you need to be dead in jogging pants. Like I want to have like, I want to look like Miss Haversham when I die. Who's Miss Haversham? Who is that? Who's who's Miss Haversham? She's from, um, is it Great Expectations? Mm, I need a picture. And she's, she's this, so Miss, she's in a, it's from a Charles Dickens novel. Okay. And she's this crazy woman who was jilted at the altar. Oh no. And you want to wear what she's wearing? And she stays, becomes a recluse in her house. And she stays there for years and years and she wears like her wedding outfit, but it becomes oh, no. more and more covered in like cobwebs and all musty. <laughs> <laughs> like, so um, she actually was played by 
um, one of my favorite actresses. <laughs> I can't remember. Show me a picture. All right, while you're looking that up, I just have to tell you. I look, oh, you have it. Miss Let Havisham. I want to look like her when oh, I'm a ghost. What the hell? Bellatrix. What's her name? I don't know. Wait, hold Potter. it closer to the camera. It's Bellatrix Lestrange. Oh, she looks like a freaky Barbie doll and like a bride. You want to look like that? That is terrifying. When I'm a ghost. You will terrify everyone if you yeah, look like that. that'd be so cool. I do want to die in yoga pants because I don't want to take any chances that I am uncomfortable in the afterlife. Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, I ask, love her. I want to look like yeah. Helena Bonham Carter. Yes. Ask Miss Havisham. Yes. When I'm a ghost, thank you She's very much. She's genius. She looks like the, how she looks in the role when she plays Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah. She looks just, I love her She's so a, much. I love her so She's much. like ageless, annoyingly. I feel like she always she looks can do the no same. Wrong. No, she can do no wrong. I totally she agree. Did wrong. you know that while we were recording we this totally, podcast? We totally gone off on like, we're like, we're finished with the Kaliak. Yeah, our we episode are. Was because I only like 50 minutes long. So let's babble shit for the next hour. <laughs> yeah. But Lucy, we started on minute one, which we never do. And we usually babble shit for the first 20 and then talk. So we just reverse um, it. So whatever. But so well. um, by the way, while we were chatting, did you see this notification that we have 6,000 downloads? Oh my goodness. That means Ginger has been doing her work because she is listening over and over and over <laughs> and over. Ginger. Brian, shout out. We love you so yeah. much. And we appreciate all of your, your downloads so much from all your, but six, we're still, your we're six, still throwing your shoe over the castle. Thousand. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be your shoe. Damn it. Over the castle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was hilarious. Ginger um, was like, why does it have to be my shoe? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, cause then it would be mine and that would be bad. So it's yours. <laughs> that'll be fine. <laughs> I'm like hardly ever on Instagram. And what I do, I just like to come in and poke fun at one person and then leave for another week. Um, but yeah, that I finished the Kaliak. I mean, she is, she's He's a goddess. Amazing. She is mm -hmm. like, I love that. I, now I wonder if there is like a patriarch counterpart. And I don't think that there is, she was married and who, and he does have a name, but like, he's nobody he's which not I think mentioned. Is pretty badass. His name it's is like, like a side piece or something. Yeah. So uh -huh. I don't know. It just opened up a whole nother, just the fact that there was a goddess at all. I just yes. didn't see that coming. It was so cool. I think that the image in my head looks a lot better if she's not wearing her much and her bunkles or whatever they're called. <laughs> Did you say uncles? Bunkles. <laughs> what are they called? Binkles. Binkles. That is not even a word. <laughs> what's the feet? What's the thing? I just that like that she has a magic hammer. Can we talk about her yeah, magic yeah, freaking I hammer do, for just a minute? With a lightning like, bolt on one side? Like what the hell? I don't like the the funny white headpiece. No, well, because the first one is a man. That's why I don't like it. Even though you say it's not, it clearly is. A much and a bink. What's the what's the things on your feet? Binkles, binkies. I'm looking. I'm looking. There's this chapter is enormous, and there's so many. There's a there's a lot more that I didn't cover. I just feel like, you know, enough. But it's enough. Although I kind of want to read from one page 150 right now. Go for it. Okay. A North Irish folktale has an interesting bone reference. The Kaliach was slain and mutilated by the Fians, and from one of her thigh bones crept out a long, hairy worm. Uh, mm. That's so disgusting. Disgusting. A red-headed dwarf warned the heroes that if this worm could find water to drink, it would destroy the whole world. What? How come you didn't read this out earlier? There's, there's a long chapter. Plus it's Ireland and this is this podcast about Scotland. So I had to keep well, stay focused. I know, Conan. We can have a little bit of. All right. Well, over. here's our, this is our PS on our podcast. Conan, the impulsive Fian lifted the worm onto the point of his spear and flung it into the lock. Dirk saying, I don't know what that is saying. There is water enough for you. 
The worm became an enormous beast, which overran the country, spreading destruction on every side and swallowing hundreds of people at the mouthful. Fion knew that the monster had on its left side a mole, which was its vulnerable spot. He wounded it there, disabling it, and the monster's blood colored the water red so that it was called Loch Derg, which means Red Lake. The monster wow. continued to haunt the loch. Interestingly, the Irish loch is L-O-U-G-H. Interesting. But then it also says, I have shown elsewhere, this is Donald, the author now speaking, this story mm -hmm. links with the dragon lore of India and the Far East. So I think when they say worm, they're not, they don't mean worm, they mean dragon. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because the worm is the old Celtic word for dragon. Yeah, I had an image of like her with uh, hairy legs and a hairy worm oh. Oh. coming out of her Ooh. bone. <laughs> And it was, yeah, it was very gross, but yes. maybe a dragon is not quite so gross. Yeah. So I definitely encourage you, if you don't have this book, Lucy, to get it. What's it's, that one? It's awesome. The Scottish Folklore and Folk Life Studies in Race, Culture, and Tradition by Donald A. Mackenzie. And he is often quoted by Catherine Briggs, which is why I, of course, had to go get it. But these are cheap. This is like the cheap you know, modern reprints. Mm -hmm. These are pretty inexpensive books. Yeah. God, I just don't know why her encyclopedia of fairies is not in this category of how come no one has published, republished that? Is it too uh, recent or maybe she still has the rights and that's why? Yeah, because somebody, hers is from the, hers is from the 70s. The 60, yeah, 60s so or 70s. It's, so it's different. Because these books that we're buying off Amazon are ones that were originally published in like the 1800s or the early yeah. 1900s. Right. So they're out of copyright now. Right. Right. Um, that must be the reason. Although I yeah. feel like some of her other books, I ha do have one of her other books that was one of these kind of cheapy reprints versions, but not yeah. that one, which is like the best one by mm -hmm. a landslide. I'm so glad you got a copy of that. Yeah, I know. They so glad. They, I don't know why they, I don't know why they're not reprinted again. I don't know why. I feel like we should do that. Again. We should see we about should that. Steal it and reprint it. I know. I'm cutting all of this out. <laughs> no, don't cut it. So good. You know, actually, okay, this is a tangent, but you can cut this. We can be done by now. If you want. This is like us yeah, just hanging out and talking. I know. But I have to bring it up really quickly because we talk about other than books. Oh, by the way. Since you're, like, this is a tangent of a tangent. Um, I did buy Demonic Reality, a field guide to the other world because I ordered it. Joe Hickey Hall talks about this book in the last, like her last, like four episodes of her mm -hmm. Modern Fairy Sightings podcast. She talks about this book. And I finally had to break down and buy it. It's amazing. Have you started it yet? I have bookmarked a page. Yeah, because. What I like about this book too is there's pictures in it. Look at that apparition. Oh, that's the famous one of the ghost on the stairs in yes. some house. I can't remember where it is. Yes. I can't wait. I ordered, I ordered a copy, not from Amazon. I ordered it from um, Blackwell's Books because it was cheaper. Yep. And so I mean, he I has a whole, a little bit longer. He has a section on Bigfoot and fairies. And I'm like, we're going to need to read that. <laughs> like, that's Definitely. huge. And I've been listening to the Sasquatch Chronicles. Did I tell you about that? Oh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you did listen. That's like a whole nother yeah. crazy fucking podcast that <laughs> keeps me up at night, but also that I'm obsessed with <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I was talking to Kate who recommended that to me and we couldn't figure out why she listens to that. She's like you, she listens to these podcasts before she goes to sleep. How do you do that? Um, like literally. With the stupidity actually, because <laughs> then I get weird dreams. There's certain ones I can't listen to at bedtime. Okay, Are you good. listening to the, um, the uncanny? I, I, so it's the, BBC, it's the same guy that did the Batsy Poltergeist. Oh, I know. So I listened to, to the first three. Is this fourth one out yet? That yeah, one and it's super spooky. The shit out of me. But of course, I, I do listen. 
but I haven't had the guts to listen. Well, the latest one is really spooky. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, that, that, yeah. I did love this. I think it was the second episode. The first two were super scary. The third one was not so much. And I was very grateful that he like took a break on me because I was like, I have to listen to these because <laughs> I have a weird, sick, obsession with them even though it's yeah. terrifying they're so good though they're, yeah he does a really good job although I feel like he's rushing a little bit they're I really always, quick which I I'm, always yeah I always whenever I listen mm-hmm. I always think I really wish that this episode was twice as long I do too mm-hmm. I do too I feel exactly but the then same that's way. because I'm a long podcast listener I'm I not do. like a, I you know I tend yeah. not to because I would listen to a lot of them when I go out for walks so I want a podcast it's like at least 40 minutes oh for sure an hour and a half would be brilliant yeah because then I can listen to the whole thing when I go out for a walk yeah um half an hour is a little bit short for me I know I've got to stop and find another podcast to listen to I I am exactly the same way I usually walk for an hour so half hour is like although I could do two half hours which I don't mind but I do find his too short but they're also it's terrifying. So I'm also kind of also glad that they're done because I'm like, holy shit! Now I'm scared for life. Have to listen to some ba- some cute story afterwards. To, to well, then I'll go that. to something more like um like Dan Cummings, where it's funny, where he interjects history with with humor, and then humor usually is all I need to kind of get me back on track again. Yeah, mentally, not in out of my terrified state. Yeah. Um, Should we wrap it up? We, I yeah, will. before we wrap up, I'm going to say I haven't got a clue what I'm doing next. Awesome. Week. I'm glad about that. It's kind of fun <laughs> to dive in. So this is what I do. I always start with Catherine Briggs. I start with her encyclopedia or dictionary, depending on what country you're in. That's where I start. And then I go where, you know, like I'll pick because she just does a phenomenal job of like the best top hundred rundowns. And then I will like track it down. that's what I do well how, where do you usually start um sometimes it's just something that I fancy learning more about or something that I've already read about that I want to read more yeah I mean there, the possibilities are endless They're there endless. are so many different things that we can do so I'll mm-hmm. come up with something I'm sure oh gosh yeah well if you if you get stuck go start with Catherine she never this, disappoints week's cal- kayak was mm-hmm. so interesting thank oh, you it was good. So good. i hope i did her justice i feel like i missed a hundred things but maybe i didn't i don't know too late now <laughs> it, is. it is what it especially is especially since i'm cutting off like the last half an hour of what we were speaking about oh, no no don't do that Okay, you can do that. <laughs> All right, that's plenty. That's plenty. Let's call it. Okay, thanks for listening. Thank you. Okay. See you all next time. Bye. Bye. I never, oh, I never.